speaks of a book haul. This isn't right. It's a very rainy tea party for Alice. Autumn is here. Well, British summer is in full swing. We'll try again. Woohoo! Big summer fabulous book haul, darling. I've got my lovely sun hat and big sunglasses on. It's my best Audrey Hepburn vibe. We're going to pretend. Hello, my fellow chatterers and book lovers. And I know now if you've popped in in search of sunshine or because you're a bit lost. Welcome everyone. I am Chatty. This is my channel, Chatty the Mad Chatter. And I'm going to be chatting away about my summer book haul. Even though it's not summer. Well, it kind of is, but um, autumn has hit. And actually, I'm not too bothered because the summer was lovely. I enjoyed the summer, but I did enjoy all of those cosy autumn vibes. But anyway. If you want to pretend it's still summer, go ahead, get yourself a cold drink with a straw. Everything just feels more fun if it's got a straw, if it's a cold drink. I don't want to drink tea with a straw because that'd be weird. So it do that. Pretend the summer is still here. Enjoy continuing the, the, the summer joy. Uh, but you can also, because you are basically going to be watching this, let's get rid of that, uh, in autumn <laughs> where I'm changed because I can't take myself seriously in sunglasses indoors. There we go. Um, <laughs> proper glasses now back on. It is um, going to be out this video because I've got a lot of backlog going on. There is a lot of videos that I'm sort of putting out because I want to catch up with all of my June, July and August books, even though we are officially in the beginning of September now. And also one of the things I need to do is my book haul from all those summer months. So that is June, July and August. So I'm going to be talking all about those today, but let's face it, you will be watching it in October. So um, I actually feel like I kind of, it's raining, I want a cup of tea, I've uh, got my uh, hot pack because um, I've got period pains, so I'm going to be cosy and blanketing actually whilst I do this book haul, which is just as well because I'm going to be talking about some library books, which definitely feel autumnal, which is awesome, um, that I currently have out. I have other ones, but I've already spoken about those in previous hauls. So if you would look, like to see previous hauls and more books, because it's great to talk about books, that's why we're all here. I will leave a link to my playlist of other book hauls there for you to peruse at your leisure, should you wish. But I'm going to be talking about books that I have earned throughout the months of June, July and August, and what book boxes I got at those. And then I've got a few sort of gifty ones as well. So grab yourself a choice of a hot or cold drink and let's crack on with talking about some books. Yes, I did need to throw a jumper over the sundress because I am, it, it, I want to feel cosy and this jumper is so, it's so soft. It's got a little bit of fleeciness inside and it's a, what I would call a blush pink, should I ever wish to use those words. It's sort of like a dusky, dusky pink. It's very cosy and it's got a Louisa May Alcott quote on the front that says, she is too fond of books it and it has turned her brain because that is me reading upside down so it's very slow and painful anyway on my channel if you have not been here before i do a lot of long videos just in one single take we are on the first take everyone this is very exciting so we're going with the chaos and the waffle so prepare for both so uh, this is my little gimmick it's pink to match the jumper my teeny tiny teacup it is one shot of tea and there is no editing clink 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 ready <sighs> there we go and i have an actual tea as well from a very cozy eel mug because mm, snuggly warmness mm -hmm. okay thank you so much if you've popped back in um and if you were on the amari live yesterday um i'm going to be repeating all those library books that i talked about because i want to share <laughs> them more with you i'm just getting more excited about the books that i have got out of the library they are all middle grade so I'm going to be talking about those first, then I'm going to go through the months, I'll explain a little bit more what I mean by books I earned if you are not familiar, then I'm going to talk through the book boxes and gifts that, um, gifty type of things where it's kind of mainly gifts to myself, but one was given to me by someone else. Um, I'm going to share with you, and um, I also have a little bit of a revelation um, as well that I'm going to go into. But before I do any of that, I'm going to be talking about some stats, because I love a stat. So. Um, the stats I'm going to be talking about are that I want to be reading more of the books I haul and I have um, been kind of logging 
my different hauls throughout the year just because it, it's it's pleasing to me i list the books so that's what i use to tell you what i've hauled and um and i take off when i've read them or not and i have little pictures next to each book so i know what month it came in and if this was a book i earned if it was a gift or if this was from a book box um i don't log my library books <laughs> i don't do that so books that i own that are in my own personal collection um i have some aims so I've been keeping track for four years. So I have the year 2021, 2022, 2023, and I am logging this year 2024, which we are two thirds of the way through the year now. So it's the beginning of September and we're two thirds of the way through the year. So I'm kind of averaging, I think, in terms of what I'm doing, just roughly from what I remember of my past stats. So all of that is fine. But this year, what I want to do is I want to read 50% of what I hauled in 2024. So I want to read half the books this year that I hauled. So it's a continuous change because the more I haul, the more I have to read. Um, and I am hauling because that's part of my... But I just, I just like to. It's, it's nice to have books. Um, but obviously 2023, 22 and 21 they are all a, the, the number of them is set they are the same number and i'm still working through them <laughs> um i want to read 20 percent of the books i've got left from 2021 and 25 percent of the books that i've got left from 2022 and 2023 um the reason i've done those percentages is because for this year i definitely want to be reading most of what i've read otherwise they linger on the shelves and i lose that initial excitement and I want to read books when I'm excited for them. Um, I still think it's nice to remind yourself of books and I, I do enjoy it all, but I, I definitely know that I just want to read books in the best possible time for me so I can get the best possible enjoyment from them. So that is my, that is my plan. Um, and 2021, I think the books have been left up either because they're starts of series I haven't wanted to start yet. I'm not as excited. I'm not in the right mood. So I've given myself less of those to read. Whereas 23 and 22, I've still got a lot of books that I am really excited about on those ones and can kind of pick up and it doesn't change my other goals so much. So that's why the numbers are as they are. So at the end of June, um, I had read 24% of my 2024 books. So nearly 25. So like kind of halfway there. So halfway through the year, halfway there. That's great. But I am also hauling books. So that number changes. So tricky tricky but we'll take it 2023 i've read 17.4 percent so not far off 25 percent that is pretty good that's very good 2022 20.4 percent again that's pretty good not far off 21 i've read 10.3 percent at the end of june so that's kind of halfway so again we'll take it where we are now going into September, um, I have read, I have hauled 61 books. That is correct from this moment. And I've read 20. So I've read a third, pretty much, which is good. I'm happy with that. So I'm on 32.7% of the books that I've read. That is, I'm happy. I'm happy with that. I feel it's going to be hard, but I feel it's possible. I don't feel like 50% is a crazy number to have. I've read 19.5% of my 23 books. So it has gone up a bit. It's gone from 17.4 to 19.5. So we'll take that little, 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 little increases, but I've got to keep the momentum going. 22, I've gone from 20.4 to 22.4. So again, little increases and that's good. And 25 is really not that far off. So I'm not going to worry too much about my 2022 books. My 2021 books, I've gone from 10.3 to 13.7 which is fine, but it's still a bit of work to be doing on that one, I'd say. So I'd say my big focuses are keep ticking away at 24, maybe try and read some 21 books. Anyway, those are, those are the stats. And now I'll show you the latest books that have come into my possession and that are currently in the house. So let's go with the books I just feel really excited by right now. And um, these are middle grade books that were published in 2024. Um, so the reason I got all these out the library was because when I was doing Amari Live last night, 
I wanted to also be talking about the Middle Grade Readers' Choice Awards. If you're not sure what that is, um, I will leave a little link here to me explaining what it was last year, but it's basically my version of Goodreads Choice Awards for Middle Grade because that got cut last year. It's just fun. It's just promoting Middle Grade books and just enjoying it. So once I picked out the library, um, I was like, I'm going to show these and talk about these because these are ones that I think would be really fun to have on the list. I'm excited by them all. There's some favourite authors. There's some new um, stories out there that I'm excited for, but I'm not going to read them. I'm totally going back on my words. I really want to read at least three of these books because we're approaching that wonderful autumny, cosy, darker, spooky, Octobery place. And these books just really fit those vibes. So I'm gonna keep going with three of the books. La 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 la. The first book is <laughs> Lights Up by Lisette Orton. This um, is a book about three different people over three different time zones in a theater. So these are all um, different children that enjoyed, uh, that enjoy and have this connection to the theatre. They're all at very different places. You've got Hetty, who the theatre is going to be cut and she's recently lost a family member. You've got Jack, who's lonely and is kind of taken in by a theatre troupe. And you've got Arraine, who wants revenge against theatre goers who wronged her. So all of those sound thrilling. And apparently they meet up and there's a lamp left. It says there's always a lamp burning. There's always... I'll try that again. Theatres always keep a lamp burning it's to keep the ghosts company and I have heard that before uh, the front cover has got lights up in um, big sort of gold foil letters we've got this theatre um, shown in the middle with its doors open there is a woman in a sort of long red costumey dress kind of looks a bit like Victorian ball gowny and a man who looks a little bit like a conjurer slash a ringmaster with a red top hat and a swelling moustache um, then we've got three children ghosts floating around um, and right at the top you have got a girl in a hoodie and another girl who looks like she's putting on a witch's hat and it looks like there's a little dog in a bag. I don't know what that means. And then you've got other characters kind of peering in from the sides as well. It's intriguing. I'm excited about this. It's got ghosts in it. I love Lizette Orton's writing in The Secrets of Haven Point. Um, so I'm 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 very keen to read to read that one. The next one is I only know it's this because it said it at the bottom of the book because I didn't know what to categorise this as a gothic thriller. This is The Island at the Edge of Night by Lucy Strange. Um on the front cover we've got this beautiful like painted um sunset with a cliff edge and over a over a sea with hills in the background. At the top of the cliff is this castle. It looks like a castle, it looks like a castle slash monastery. Um, and then right at the bottom on the uh, on the sea, we've got uh, a girl in a boat. Um, and we've got pink foiling kind of around the edges of the cliff and the, uh, the sea waves. Um, and this is about um, a girl who's abandoned at a boarding school on a Scottish island. Um, and they've all been sent there for doing something wicked, but they don't know what that is. So um, the island is essentially their prison, and they're trying. And um, this girl is trying to find out what she's done wrong. Um, and um, I presume there's going to be other children on there as well that she um, sort of lives with. And it just sounds creepy, and I'm really in the mood for that. Today is a day for cutting up and reading that kind of book because it's rainy and grey. And the final book that I want to keep and read is uh, The Nine Night Mystery by Shana Jackson. I have, so all those three authors I have read other things, but all of these authors I've read another another book by and really enjoyed them. Um, so I read other mysteries by Shana Jackson. I read The High Rise Mystery. Um, this says one birthday party, one dead body, nine nights to solve the mystery. Um, so this sounds like a bit of a black comedy because um, there was a birthday party thrown and the birthday girl was murdered <laughs> and three friends who are all kids 
um need to find out what happened um it says they throw a traditional Caronian nine night celebration to help guide her soul to the next world um and they want to the, the um, children wesley margaret and joseph want to find out what secrets rachel was keeping and what happened and it's described as brilliantly sharp and funny i did find her other books really funny and i really enjoyed the characters so it probably will be that but i still haven't quite got over the idea of i feel like a child has been murdered in this book and that feels a bit weird so <laughs> but i i'm up for i'm up for a murder mystery it sounds really fun and it's um it, it, it's definitely I, it, mysteries in autumn snuggling up at, when it's dark just feels the right time to read them yes it's all about the vibes and uh, the other two books that I do want to read but I they're not quite hitting me as cozy autumn as much as those three so I will take these ones back to the library um is Noosh and the Stolen Emerald by Jess Binder Balan just been to Berlin. I really enjoyed Ashley and the Spirit Bird by her. I really like her writing. I want to read more from her. That was like a that was a contemporary adventure. This is a historical fiction. So it is about a princess um, of an Indian kingdom, and she is furious when the British East India Company um, take a jewel um, from her country. And her father is going to see Queen Victoria at Buckingham Palace. So she comes with him and is determined to uh, recover this jewel that has been stolen from her country. I think that sounds like so much fun. I can't wait to see what Jasmine de Balan does with this one. And the final book that I have that is published in 2024 is a fantasy. It is called the it is called Artisans, um, The Forgotten Magic by L.D. Lipinski. L.D. Lipinski is most known for their fantasy um, trilogy, Strange Wars Travel Agency. I haven't read but I really want to and I know I'm going to love because I just feel I will. I have read Jamie the contemporary book and I loved Jamie so um, I feel this is their newest first book in their newest series it feels like it's going to be a series. It's two siblings um, one um, Edward I think is kind of the family member that, that always feels like he's in the shadow of his, his sister who is always so much better than him um, but he manages to get a certain type of magic um, because old, he, uh, before that he was worried he wasn't going to have any magic at all. Um, but there's a, it sounds like there's a bit of a danger to it. Um, and his sister always seems to be doing really well, always seems to be perfect. So it sounds like there's a bit of a... Uh, what's the word? There's, there's a bit of tension between the two, shall we say. Um, so I'm, I'm, I think it's going to be, I'm mainly sold on the fact that I know L.D. Lipinski wrote it <laughs> at the moment. Um, I like the idea of siblings. I like the idea of this new magic, but it's not going to be as a huge amount to go on beyond that. But it's L.D. Lipinski, so I feel it's going to be good. Okay, those are my library books uh, that I haven't mentioned in a haul as of yet. Um, so in a minute, I'm going to go on to my gift gonna enjoy um, some tea first of all so this book was given to me for my birthday uh, by my cousin and it is a board book of um, one of the little people big dreams books so this is um, my first Ellen Montgomery and it's called Lucy Maud so this is a board book version of the story of um, Ellen Montgomery who is most well known for writing Anne of Green Gables and we've got really beautiful painted illustrations in here um, and it just very simply sort of like tells the life story um, of her and how she came to write a classic that is so beloved by many many people throughout the world. I also when I was in one of the supermarkets um, uh, another board book caught my eye <laughs> that I was like, um, I really want this for work to share with people at work. And it is called First Festivals Pride. It's a lift the flat book about pride. <laughs> so um, you've got all these um, different uh, people in the community getting ready to celebrate pride. Um, so here we've got um, a lesbian couple here who um, are walking their dog. Um, and there's uh, the lesbian pride flag from a um, 
summer house. Um, we have got um, shopkeepers putting up inclusive pride flags. We've got individual pride flags here. So you've got the, um, uh, the asexual flag, the non-binary flag, the um, bisexual flag, all sorts of different flags. Um, so we, we've got houses undecorated, then we lift the flap, and then we have houses decorated for pride. Um, and it kind of goes on with that thing, so sort of talking about, talking about um, what pride is, what it means to people, why it's nice to celebrate it, why it's important to celebrate it. Um, and it's just about showing support, being inclusive. It's very child friendly. Um, and it's very much about showing representation of um, different families, because children will have people in their families who are part of the LGBTQ plus community or have friends who have got families that are and they may well themselves identify as someone as part of that family, as part of that community. So it's just a beautiful book showing all of that um, and I just really enjoy it and I haven't yet taken it to my group because um, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm just feeling a little bit protective of it once I think I've battered it a little bit myself. I will then share it at my group um but yeah that was um that was that was uh that was just a, that was just really nice to see in the supermarket I was like yes I will take that um and then it's got other festivals as well you've got other first festivals um so you've got the Lunar New Year Diwali Hanukkah Christmas and um, with Lift the Flat Books in this series it's a Ladybird First Festival series so I just thought that was really cute and then this was a book that I gifted myself um because it just needed to happen and I'm actually just sat stroking <laughs> stroking this book with my hands just because I think it's so beautiful and I have since read it and love it so much and that is um The Trouble with Mrs Montgomery Hurst which is a historical fiction by Katie Lumsden who you may know from booktube um if you don't I will link her channel here and you should definitely go and check her out she reads a lot of um classics and historical fiction and it is very informative this book is beautiful. It's a hardback. Um, we have got a white cover with beautiful um, purpley blue silhouettes um, in like a border. So you've got flowers and birds at the top and then at the bottom you have got a carriage in the middle um, and then you've got um, silhouettes of people in bonnets and hats um, at the bottom. This um, is a village um, of Wicken, it's the county of Wickenshire, and um, so it has that kind of village gossipy community. Um, everyone sort of with a bit of a scent for a scandal. Everyone um, having to interact sort of with themselves, but it also looks at class. Um, there is some romance in here. There is friendship in here. There is um, sibling relationships in here, um, and it's just done so beautifully. It's so funny. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I hauled this, <laughs> I hauled this at the um, the book launch um, and it has been signed by Katie, so it says Too Chatty from Katie Lumsden and um, I've also, I kept my dance card as well um, as a little uh, momentum inside the book and I also have a bookmark from um, the Dent Bookshop, um, at Daunt, sorry, Daunt Books at Cheapside. So I've just kept those in there and um, so satisfying. Let's hear that again. The snap of the hardback book being closed. Um, so yeah, I just I just gave it to myself. I was like, I'm not, I'm not gonna earn this. This was really fun um, to be able to go to. I want to have the book. I want to read it over the summer. And I'm just, just gonna allow myself to just have this as a gift. So I did. Uh, and I have since read it, um, but I'm trying to not, it's not a wrap up, it's a book haul, so shh. There we go. Right, I'm gonna move on to talking about books I've earned after I've moved my legs because they are going a little bit asleep and uh, are achy. Oh, there we go, that's better. Right, so the books that I earned in June was not a lot, I earned two. Um, June was a weird month. Um, I had a wobble in May uh, with mental health, um, grieving, um, and just generally feeling overwhelmed by life. So there wasn't a lot, whole lot of being healthy going on. Um, when I talk about being healthy for books, I basically give myself points for doing healthy things, both for my mental health and my physical health. Um, just 
good lifestyle things that I think are important and I um, then earn books by depending how many of those things I do each day so yeah I only earn two but that's fine <laughs> it, is, it is what it is uh, but the two I've earned are continuing with series and I'm excited about them and one of the books is something I have had under my bed for the longest time when did this book come out this book was published in 2020. <laughs> this book was published in 2020. So I would have got this in 2021 before it went into paperback. This is The Empire of Gold by S.A. Chakraborty. Now, I heard so many people talking about the David Budd trilogy. So many people, particularly Abby Salter from the channel Abby Salter and Olivia, when we say her surname, Abby from the channel Abby Salter and Olivia Savannah from the channel Olivia's Catastrophe. Just adoration for um, the Days of Bad Trilogy. And I have loved um, other recommendations from both of those booktubers. So I very felt, I felt strongly that I was going to really enjoy the Days of Bad Trilogy. And I heard them both talk about how the final book did justice to the whole series and it was fantastic so I was like yes I'm gonna get it in hardback because I feel like I'm gonna love it so I ordered it <laughs> and I got it <laughs> and then it stayed under my bed because I didn't have the paperbacks of the other two because you cannot find the hardbacks of Kingdom of Copper and City of Brass you you cannot find them unless you want to pay a ridiculous amount of money which I don't so I I I, I in the end just got them in paperback and um, this year, it's one of the series that I want to read. So I now have all the books on my shelf and it just feels so good to hold this. <laughs> um, it feels so good to hold it. I just love the feel of a hardback, just like that nice firm feeling in your hand and just the, the smoothness of the book cover and just the, how it will just hold open a little bit when you open it. So it's got some gold end pages and um, there's nothing fancy it's not like a special edition or anything on the cover it's got um under the dust jacket we've got this like dark burgundy which matches the doors so we've got this um beautiful um i, I feel there should be a, a proper name for it but i haven't got it in my head um but it's like this beautiful um decorated sort of curved middle eastern doorway with this um uh, the beautiful kind of mosaic art that you see in a lot of mosques um, and then you've got these gold flourishes it's made of greens and blues and yellows and reds the mosaic artwork and you've got little bits of gold foiling on it you've got um, the red doors it says the empire of gold in big gold letters and then we've got a silhouette of um, sort of like the the domed uh, buildings um, of I would imagine David Bad, David Bad, um, and then similar, similar on the back. So it's like this doorway, and it just looks, it just looks so exciting. Um, so yes, there we go. There is, um, there is that one. I have started the uh, David Bad trilogy, and I do love it. So I feel very satisfied with my past self for getting the final book in in hardback. I know lots of people like their series to match. If I love something, I, I do get a big thrill from having one of the books in hardback because I just prefer the feel of a hardback book. The other book I have that I in June is also hardback and this is Pages and Co by Anna James. It is the third book, which is Tilly and the Map of Stories. Um, I really love the design of these books where you have, it looks like someone has burrowed through the middle of the book. You've got like these torn, torn pages in like a portal circle and um, characters are running through those pages. You've got Tilly and her friend Oscar running through those. And then around the edges, we've got trees with paper and books on them. Um, a mysterious character who is dressed in kind of like Greek flowing robes uh, and a ball of string. And then on the back, you've got paper trees where it, it, it's ripped pages of a book. So you've got writing on them. So this says, talking over the dormass, I suppose it does. Abel was a large one, crowded together at one corner of the room. They cried out, coming, there's plenty of room in dignity. She sat down on an armchair at one end of the table, said, that is an extract clearly from Alice in Wonderland. Uh, and we have Alice popping out from behind the tree as well. There's also a train on the back. 
and it says the best way to have a happily ever after is to write your own story. And these illustrations have been done by Paolo Escobar. And our, on the dust jacket, we have got red. This one has got bright neon sprayed edges, which I'm not entirely sure about. None of my other Tilly and the Book Wanderer books have got sprayed edges. It's literally just this one. I presume the first two had it at some point as well. Um, oh, I love it at the back. It's got this little, uh, on the end pages, it says, don't get stuck in the end papers, which is a book wandering suggestion. And there's also a little picture of the Globe Theatre on the uh, the um, the flap of the um, book cover. And then the Naked Hardback has got these amazing um, printed pictures as well. We have to pages and pages um, of extracts from books with random scrolls, books, cards, trains, um, as a ship in trees, which I now know what it is. Um, a sign that says Shakespeare's sister, um, pictures of Washington DC in photographs, um, a picture of a maze, plane tickets, and it says story, bibliognost, treasure, magic, clues, and good, good bookshops are hard to resist. So yes, that is also very delightful. So there we go. Those are my two June books that I've earned. The books I earned in July again too similar similar situation in july still going with craziness plus lots of other family stuff going on in uh, in that month but the book i earned in july the first one i got my hands on is this fantastic book here the sky on fire by jen lyons at least i'm hoping it's fantastic i have not yet read this book but it looks amazing I've already described the cover a few times in some of my other videos, um, but essentially we have got what looks like red mountains, then behind them and taking the center stage of the book, black mountains. Um, but when you look closer, you see that those mountains look a little bit like two, um, they look very craggy, but they're actually two dragon wings with a dragon head in the middle, aiming up towards the sky. And they all have kind of like turret detail around the edges so when you look closer you see they are actually mountains with castles on them but it also does look like dragon wings as well and you have got this dragon head um going towards the sky the sky is red with an orange sun setting we've got dragon silhouettes flying above it and then we've got lots of orange clouds jen lyons is best known for writing the chorus of chorus of dragons which is an epic fantasy which i love this is a standalone this is a book that she's put out since i really hope i'm going to enjoy it it's on my september tbr we will see it was also on my august tbr and i was supposed to have read it in july but there we go it's one of those books where it's like i'm just waiting for the perfect moment a book i did read though is hurricane child uh hurricane child i didn't actually earn so that's only one book in july that i actually earned um this i stole from under the bed because when i played my july book game i got a fiegel card and I asked you to vote on one of three books and the one that got the most votes was Hurricane Child by Kaysen Callender. This is a middle grade um, set, where is it set? It's set um Caribbean islands and it's about a girl called Caroline who um, lives with her father um, and she doesn't know where her mum is or what happened to her mum. She's having a hard time at school. Um, uh, there's a new girl that she's a little bit infatuated with so it's basically kind of Caroline sort of working out all of these different things. Um, and we have a picture of, it kind of looks like oiled painting. It's very strong colours. Um, so we've got Caroline in a white dress standing in a blue boat. Um, and then around her, we've got lots of like um, brightly coloured um, plants and palm leaves um, all around her. Moving on to August. August I did a lot better. <laughs> August things were clicking into place and I was a lot more chilled out um, and I actually started um, making sure I was doing lots of healthy things like trying to go to bed when I was tired um, and just trying to do things that made me feel a bit better about myself. I had basically not been doing a lot of um, exercise or anything like that and I really felt that's something I've wanted to be doing but I needed it to fit into my routine so it feels practical and manageable especially when the children go back to school. Um, so I started doing a very small early morning run. I hate running. 
I'm not a runner. <laughs> um, but it was just something that was manageable and achievable. And I thought if it's just small, I'm going to manage to do it every day. And it's just something to kind of get my heart beating faster, just a little bit of cardio to start the day with. And then I was allowed to go and have a nice hot shower and a cup of tea and read my books. Um, and that kind of worked until we went on holiday. So and I have picked it up again and started doing it again. Um, so I'm hoping this is something that I have as like a little routine in, in my day to day. So I've got four books to talk to you about. And the first book was one I got out of bed. So I was like, I got out of bed. First book I just pulled out from under the bed where I keep all the books that I need to earn. And um, this is a romance, a contemporary romance by Alexis Hall called Paris Dallancourt is about to crumble. Dallancourt. Do I pronounce court or do I say Dallancourt? I'm going to go with Dallancourt because I think it's fancy and I think you don't pronounce a T, but I'm very happy to be corrected. Anyway, this is um, by Alexis Hall, who is um, most well known for uh, writing boyfriend material, but has also written um, lots of other series um, that were independently published. I think they are now being um, released and published with bigger publishers. Uh, <laughs> I'm not making a whole lot of sense. Anyway, this book I bought when I went on the um, booktubers meetup in London. I got it from Gaze the Word. It was second hand in a sale for two pounds. I'd already bought the books I was planning to buy, but I couldn't say no to this one um, when I saw it there. The cover is so eye catching. Um, it is a rainbow cake um, cut in half and the title is in the layers of cake. And then you've got a slightly uncomfortable looking um, white man um, to the right and then you've got a very well turned out confident looking um, I, th I think um, Asian man I think he was he from Beng was he from Bengali was he from Bangladesh I think I can't remember in the book they do say and I'm very sorry that I can't remember um, Anyway, he looks very confident <laughs> compared to the other one. Um, so that is um, Paris is the one who looks very uncomfortable um, and the confident man is his love interest. And they meet as competitors on a British baking TV show uh, called Bake Expectations. This is a lot of fun. <laughs> don't do a book review, don't do a book review. It's a lot of fun, but it also very much explores um, their relationship um what it means to be in a healthy relationship they've both got their own kind of things that they need to deal with it was very very funny I definitely need to read more Alexis Hall I'm so pleased I pulled it out it definitely felt like the right time for me to be reading something like this and I loved it and we'll be reading a lot more so yeah that was a uh, makes me smile when I see it on the shelf I also have another Pages & Co, so I needed to haul the next book in the series to read. This is book four, The Book Smugglers. Um, so again, this time instead of bright pink, which is what the first one is, which I don't think I said, this is a teal colour. We've still got that lovely portal ripped page book hole, but behind we can see it looks like Venice. Um, I'm getting a gondola and a bridge, um, they're sort of like bridged houses. Um, it is not Oscar that is on the front cover. This is a character called Milo. Um, and then we have characters from The Wizard of Oz around the outside. So we have the Tin Man, Scarecrow and the Lion. Um, and then on the back, we have um, the railway children and Dorothy and a train. And it says, you can tell a lot about a person by the books they read. The end pages are purple. Um, it's a... It's a lilac keeper, but it's stronger than lilac. It's like a fuchsia, like a, no, a purpley fuchsia. <laughs> it's a purple colour. I'm going to stop trying to talk about colour shades. <laughs> Make it whatever colour purple you want. And under the dust jacket, we have got um, a telescope. We have got um, red flags that you would wave to signal danger on the railway. We have got, um, I'm going to say toast. Um, with a glass of milk, potion bottles, a gold chain with like a gold, it looks like a gold potion bottle on it, books, different goggles, they look, they sort of look like glasses but goggles and they've got keys in them, that's fascinating, some rocks, 
Um, yes, Venice, it says Venice on the, on the tickets that say Venice all aboard. Um, cup of tea and uh, more Wizard of Oz characters and a yellow brick road. And it says, sesquim, can't say this word, it's a made up word. Sesquip ad adalian. Sesquip adalian. Story, imagination, poison, mystery, alchemy, archive, book magic. And then we're all made of stories. Um, currently, currently reading it. Don't know what some of the things are, but don't know what other ones are. Oh, and uh, the end flap, we've got the Emerald City with a rainbow just there. Do -do. Uh, the next book I have is um, another contemporary romance, but this is a YA, not an adult. Um, and this is The Henna Wars by um, Adiba Jagerda. Um, she it's uh, about an Irish Bengali girl and her um, in the beginning of the book she um, comes out to her family that she is a lesbian and kind of deals with how that if that changes the family dynamic um how she is at school uh, she attends a all girls catholic school and um which uh, has its own difficulties and um they she's also kind of be she's doing this business plan of doing henna and someone else decides to do that as well there's um i suppose this looks at cultural appropriation um also first love that kind of thing beautiful sister relationship all of that stuff again not a wrap-up don't need to do it i'm talking about hauling books anyway i heard amazing things about this one from um again olivia from olivia's catastrophe gets a lot of book recommendations from her i thought it sounded brilliant i really love why a contemporary stories that talk about social issues so this seemed like a perfect fit for me I have since read it and enjoyed it. So yeah. <laughs> and my final one that I'm also currently reading is one that I may have mentioned already. Amari and the Despicable Wonder. I may have already mentioned this in the last three videos I've done. But yes, it's book three. I love the Amari series. It's a middle grade. It's fantasy. B.B. Alston, I think, is fantastic. Um, I love his work. If you don't know what Amari is... I'm going to leave the link to the Amari along here because if you like middle grade and fantasy, I think you should check her out. I think she's awesome. So there we go. Those are all the books I had. So that was four for August. August August was good. We'll see how September is. I'm now going to move on to my word. It's failing me. Um book boxes thank you we got there in the end um so this is um shelter box which is a sort of charity um book club so you pay a certain subscription and you can overpay and a certain amount of the money goes towards the charity shelter um which is a global charity um making sure everyone in the world has homes um and the books that are in the book club pardon me <laughs> um do tend to be um ones that cover a wide range of um being from different places so different places different cultures different countries um so it definitely kind of pushes pushes me out of my comfort zone they just tend to there's a mixture of um contemporary historical fiction there have been some thrillers there have been some mysteries um yeah i think that's i think that's generally the vibe um, some more, I'd say, higher literature ones than others, but um, generally are sort of more thought-provoking books. Um, so the next, so the one I received in July, um, so it's the beginning of July, um, I had heard of. It is Eight Lives of a Century Old Trickster by Mirani Lee. Um, is this translated? No, it's not translated. Um, but um, I think the author is from um, Korea. Um, and it has been, it was one of the books nominated for the long list of the Women's Prize. Um, so it's a debut, it's a debut novel. Um, and it is about um, 
it's about this woman who um, lives in a retirement home and is basically like telling her life story and it's like all these different aspects of her life. I have heard that you definitely need to check the trigger warnings because there is some very upsetting stuff in here. I was definitely intrigued when I was watching a lot of the Women's Prize content by this one, but I wasn't sure if I'd read it. And I still don't know if I will or not. Um, but I have it anyway, so either I will read it, I might try a little bit of it and see if it is going to work for me, or I might gift it along to either a free little library or a charity shop. Um, but I don't mind doing that with these ones because I I enjoy getting a surprise book and it's not something I would necessarily have heard of or have picked out for myself. So sometimes I find a gem, sometimes I don't, but either way, money's going to charity and I get to share these these books um, where other readers may well find them um, exactly to their taste. The next one I have never heard of, but I am really interested in. This is called Patchwork by Ellen Banda Aoku. Um, apologies if I didn't pronounce that correctly. Um, so this is another prize winning book. It says the winner of the 2010 Penguin Prize for African writing. Um, it's a coming of age um, novel um, and it is set in 1970s Zambia. Um, it says Pumpkin is a nine year old girl pulled between two vastly different worlds. That of her father, the wealthy and power hungry Joseph Sakabungo, and her mother, his unstable mistress. As Pumpkin attempts to come to terms with her own identity, she struggles to fashion a future for herself out of the torn patchwork of her parents' lives. It's a beautifully constructed, Bandu Aku has created a story that is equal in parts uplifting and bitter sweet. Those words make me very happy. I like, I love an uplifting story and I enjoy bittersweet because I think it's realistic but it's not traumatising. It gives us hope. It needs to be a glimmer of hope in the book otherwise it's just too dark and depressing and I just don't know why we'd want to do that to ourselves. That is my personal opinion. That is what I like to read. So excited for Patchwork. Jury's out on, on eight lives. Um, not because I think it's a bad book by any means. I, if I was a, I suppose maybe a more stomachly strong reader then I'd probably enjoy it a lot but I don't know if I'm gonna um, cope with the content we will find out and that moves me along to my final book box um, which is the Fairy Loot YA subscription um, I have been getting the Fairy Loot subscription boxes since 2021 or two no since 2022, January 2022, I got my first um, Fairy Loot subscription box. Um, so this is my third year of getting them. And I have made the decision that I am now going to stop. Um, in that time, there was only two boxes I didn't get just because I wanted to kind of, you have the choice of choosing to like skip a month. Um, so I did skip a couple of months last year just because um, I, I felt like I was getting a little bit overrun <laughs> by these books um, and just wanted to like pace myself a little bit more. Um, and I have now decided that actually I have got a lot of these books and um, I, I think the time has come to just, to just stop. I've really enjoyed getting it. It's brought me a lot of joy, just the excitement of not knowing what's inside. The beauty of the books has been just glorious. I love the artwork and everything it's it's so fantastic um i've enjoyed the items of the book some better than others um this uh glass this glass with a with a top and a drinking straw um is beautiful and it's from one of my favorite books which is bella donna by adeline grace so it's got a quote on it that says it's, you are mine and i am yours and together this world is ours not my favorite bella donna quote um but it's it's cute, it's got vines and purple flowers from it, and um, it's got a glass straw, which I enjoy. Um, so I, I, that was a, one, of, one of my favourite gifts, um, and I've enjoyed quite a lot of the things. But the time has come where I am having book piles on my floor. I've got book piles on my floor. I've got a lot of books that I'm enjoying reading, want to get to, other series I want to look into, and I still want to keep collecting books. But with Fairy Loot, I now find I've got an influx of... YA fantasy which is fine I like it 
but it's a much bigger percentage of my book collection than I feel reflects my taste as a reader. Um, my favourite genres are, my favourite kind of reading age genres are middle grade whimsical fantasy, YA contemporary and adult epic fantasy. Not YA fantasy. <laughs> so um, I feel the, the space left in uh, my bookshelf needs to be for things that I'm really, really going to love than things that might be fun. So there have definitely been books in fairy loops that I have absolutely loved and enjoyed and ones that have surprised me. I did not realise how much I was going to enjoy This Vicious Grace by Emily Fende and how much I was going to enjoy Belladonna by um, Adeline Grace. So those things have, have been great and there have been some fantastic books like I love uh, my copy of um, Daughter of the Moon Goddess by Suleen Tan. I really love um, the fact that we got um, The Stardust Thief, which I really, really enjoyed. I loved Sing Me to Sleep, which I'd never heard of. Um, and I am getting the sequels to those and I'm getting the Fairy Loot ones because I, I, I love those, the, how beautiful those books are and I, it gives me a lot of joy to have them on my shelves. Um, but I think the time has come for me to stop now because I've got lots of beautiful books, but I don't know if I'm going to love them. So I'm still working my way through. I don't actually know how many of my fairy loot books I've read and how many I haven't. Um, so I've decided that I'm going to cease my subscription. So I have now. So this is going to be my last um, fairy loot books to show you. Um, so the first group. Uh, but I think as well this year we've got a lot more romance heavy um, books. Um, there was always like, you know, an aspect of romance, but I think the most of the ones um, that we got this year, they definitely felt like it was like a bigger part of the plot. Um, and that's not the favourite thing that I enjoy about YA fantasy. So I felt like it's possibly like not going to be for me sort of books that said I am going to enjoy reading the ones that I do have but it's definitely going to be kind of more mixing it between other books like I, if I started reading lots of YA fantasy together I would very much like not enjoy them as much it would be too much it'd be kind of too much of that type of um of that type of book whereas I need it to, to keep it fun it needs to be for me spread out between heavier um, topic books, heavier epic fantasies and non-fiction for me to appreciate like more of the faster paced um, fun times that I think these books give. Okay, that's enough waffle about that. So, <laughs> uh, the June book was The Darkness Within um, by Tricia Levenseller. Um, she says she's the author of The Shadows Between Us, which I have never heard of or read. Um, <laughs> But like I said, it's not uh, not usually for me. And I think out of the three, this is the one that's possibly going to be the least for me. But we will see. Um, it's very pretty. Um, it's It's got that shade of purple. It, it's like a dark lilac. It is like a dark lilac, that shade. And then you've got these sort of more violety flowers um, on the cover with dark green leaves. And there's a golden key in foiling in the middle. And then the title is um, sort of wound around that. Um, down the spine we've got the key and the leaves um, in the middle of the book and then on the back we've got um, those leaves and purple flowers sort of like as a little border and it's got the tagline my husband is taking too long to die so there we go um, in so, oh and the sprayed edges are beautiful we've got black at the top and the bottom and then along the spine you've got um, this like looks like a sort of dark pinky romantic -y swirl and then again you've got these sort of violet flowers I feel they're going to, we're going to be told what those flowers actually are at some point because they're all over this book um, under the dust jacket we have black um, black border it looks like kind of like an old portrait you've got a square frame and then you've got like an oval within and some swirly bits around it then in the middle um, I don't know what this wild flower is called. Um, I uh, call them roundabouts because I used to pick them as a child and swirl them in my hands and they'd spin round. Uh, that's not their official name. I think they're, wh they're, they're white. 
um, but they're quite big. You find them like by a lot of road size in the UK anyway. And on the back you've got um, you've got an ink drawing of a couple in uh, ball gown clothes dancing with each other, um, a woman and a man, who I presume is the uh, protagonist and the uh, romantic interest. The end pages, you have got some artwork. It's not my favourite artwork. I think it's it's still done really well, but it's not. Uh, there's a lot of black edging to it that I don't enjoy as much. Uh, and you've got a girl in a yellow dress reading from a book, sat on a stone bench with wisteria um, around the uh, sort of Greek pillars. And then you have you have a you have a male <laughs> leaning against the stone pillar looking at her out of the corner of his eye and then on the back page you have the two of them in a dancing um swoony clutch hold and there's a shadow of them on the wall they're in a window and you've got some gold foiling of flowers um around the edge there different flowers on the front so very very pretty um but not not for not not my vibe and then you have an alternate cover so you've got artwork under the dust jacket again very beautiful lots of pinks and purples um a silhouette of palacey castley things um and then the couple again dancing with each other she's now full of diamonds and white glitteriness and he's wearing a red coat with um swirly embroidery um and this is uh i think it's like a, a family inheritance um she's a She's married an older man um, as a, what's the word? When marriage was your only choice. Kind of like a career, it's like a career marriage for her, I suppose. Um, and um, I think she she wants stuff and then a family member who she finds quite attractive um, is going to try and thwart her within that. So that is the uh, basis of that one from what I understand. July. Um, I think I will enjoy it a little bit more because it has got more of a fantasy plot rather than um, romantic tension, I think. And this is Sleep Like Death by Kaylin Bayron. I haven't read any Kaylin Bayron. I know Emily from Novel Novels loves Kaylin Bayron. Um, and on the back of the book, it says Cinderella is dead, but Snow White fights on. Um, I've never read Cinderella is Dead. I heard a lot of people mixed things. I heard a lot of people really hyped for it. Some people really enjoying it. Some people enjoying parts of it, but not others. Um, so I haven't tried it myself. I don't know why it never piqued my interest. But it, it just, it just didn't. Um, but I think this one does sound, it does sound quite fun. Um, so you've got a really dark kind of, um, like dark, like aubergine purple here. You've got a green apple on a string dangling in the center and then there's like poison kind of dripping i'm gonna say poison poison or slime dripping um from it and underneath you've got the title sleep like death underneath um directly under that apple um, and then it is framed by um pink and purple flowers and i could not tell you what they are at all they, they're very big and bloomy flowers <laughs> great uh, description for me and it's the same on the back those um, flowers in like a border on the spine we've got the apple and um, we've got purple sprayed edges and then on the main edge of the book we've got those flowers again in a stencil along the side I love the end pages on this and um, I do think the art on this one is, is really beautiful um, quite a simple foiling on under the naked hardback um, but effective it looks like a spinning wheel I don't know if it is. Um, it's definitely some sort of wheel. You've got sort of gold foiling in all its little swirly bits as like a border. And then in the centre, you've got very sort of elaborate swirling around a wheel, um, which I immediately went spinning wheel because I'm thinking fairy tales, but it's, it's not a spinning wheel. Um, it doesn't look like a mirror. It doesn't really look like an object. It looks like a cart horse wheel. <laughs> Maybe it will come clear. Um, it says, Eve is ready to be the queen's sword, to be her vengeance. Princess Eve was raised with one purpose, to destroy the knight, an evil sorcerer who terrorised Queen's Bridge with his wicked magic. Far too many of her subjects have been devastated by the knight's trickery, but Eve's own unique magic, the ability to conjure weapons from nature, makes her a worthy adversary. 
As she approaches her 17th birthday, Eve is ready to battle, but her mother, Queen Regina, has been acting bizarrely, talking to a strange mirror alone every night. Then a young man claiming to be the knight's messenger appears and shares a shocking truth about Eve's past. Unsure of who of who to trust or what to do next, Eve must find the courage to fight, but will it be enough to save her family and her queendom? So this is, it says it's a standalone um, reimagining of Snow White's tale, um, but it's the world of the Cinderella is dead. Um, so I, I'm hoping you don't need to have read that. Um, I'm pretty sure you don't. Um, but uh, if you enjoyed it, it's it's more of the same. You have an alternative dust jacket on the side. Um, I like the boldness of the apple, but this is very kind of fairy tale esque. We've got blues and greens as the main colour palette here. The spine looks very um, fairy tale -y. You've got those um, kind of ribbed markings like down the book to make it look like an old leather bound book. Um, and it's got green swirly bits. Um, the end, the back and the front of the book, it's got gold swirly bits like a, like a portrait border. Um, but we've got like a knight's helmet at the top and then possibly like a heart motif and some daggers like like they've been kind of like molded into the frame you've got a silhouette of um i presume the snow white protagonist holding the apple in her hand um and then like night sky and stars um on the two um flaps you've got a necklace that looks like some sort of holly leaf and then you've got a crown and then on the back, you've got a castle with a little bridge with a forest over there um, in like a silhouette style. The end page art, I think, is really cool. Um, so you've got the woods, you've got Snow White as this um, strong fighting figure. So she's what she's called Eve. We've got Princess Eve um, in a dark purple cloak holding a golden dagger. Um, there is a mysterious kind of shadow figure, looks like he's looming up behind her. And um, you've got lots of trees and an owl and there's lots of gold foiling sort of edging all these different things. It looks really cool. Um, and then you've got like gold like flecks in um, in her hair and on her cloak as well. Um, and then on the back, you've got this mirror and you've got a uh, human, I think they're male, in the mirror. Um, and this could be Eve's mother. It could be Eve in like a white nighty looking at the mirror. So, um, very intriguing, we will see. And um, both of these seem quite sort of middle length, look like 300 to 400 pages type of books. Um, the final book is a lot thicker. 